Welcome to For the Long Run, the podcast exploring the why behind what keeps runners running long, strong, and motivated. I'm your host, Jonathan Levitt. Through personal and professional connections in the running world, I have the privilege of getting to know some amazing athletes. I've always been fascinated by the psychological aspect of running, and this podcast is aimed at exploring this and much more. I hope you enjoy. This episode is sponsored by Johnji. Johnji is a local to Boston running apparel company dedicated to exploring, connecting, and giving back through running. Inspired by travel, informed by function, and built for adventure, Johnji makes running essentials to equip you wherever you run or roam. The company was founded on the core belief that water is a human right and donates 2% of their sales to supporting clean water organizations around the world. I've known the two co-founders of Johnji for over five years, and it's been a privilege to see them grow and increase the level at which they've been able to give back to the running community and to the world in general. And action. Welcome back. I have Brogan Graham joining me today on the podcast, which is also a video cast for the first time in a while. Um, Brogan is sitting in his uh, in his home gym that is colorful, and he is pretending to run while seated. Um, he's, I believe, he's about to take a photo. I think no, uh, no it's a baby not baby quite. Monitor. Oh, it's a baby monitor. So before we go too far, um, Brogan. Uh, first, thanks for for um, joining the podcast today. I believe we we first picked this um, this uh, we first had this idea pr- approximately ten years ago before the <laughs> before we knew each other and before the podcast existed. So I'm glad after ten years of negotiations, we were finally able to broker a a, a mutual time. So first, thank you for for coming on. And second, who is Brogan Graham? Oh my gosh! Well, thank you for having me. The problem with getting on this show was that I, one of my favorite things to do is talk trash to you about right. running and how much you love running. But then because that I am a moving target in so many ways, then like the jokes became real. Like I, I think the first thing I said about your podcast was like, I will never be on that podcast. <laughs> and then like, but then I did, we didn't find a date for a million years. So like the joke. Right. Kind of, so anyway, I am pumped to be here. Uh, who is Brogan Graham? I am a, I am a, uh, I'm a dad. To a little two and a half year old boy, um, I'm a husband to a, a yoga teacher. I'm a Midwestern American. I'm a privileged white male. Um, I'm, I identify as an athlete. I'm very proud to be from Wisconsin. I'm very proud to be in my twenty sixth year full time working on this community. Uh, fitness organization called November Project. My my buddy and I from college are both the co-founders of the November Project, which for those listeners out there, it's a um, it's an organization that uses fitness as a vehicle to get people up and get people connected and get people energized and inspired. Uh, and it just involves a lot of uh, hardworking, kind of wacky, hardcore, silly, creative workouts that bring people together. Um, but we do trick people into becoming athletes and more athletic, no matter where you enter that, that kind of, um, that trail of November project. Um, last couple identifiers. I, um, let's see, I am, uh, yeah, I guess I'm a runner. I am a runner. You know, I've been injured this entire year. It feels like Laura Green, our mutual friend told me not to ramp up my mileage too much during COVID. So I followed her advice and I ran for 90 minutes every day until I was, <laughs> uh, and so she was right on that. Um, but I'm a runner, you know, as long as I've known you, like, I feel like, uh, the road marathon thing, which I was kind of rotating out of caring about was when you were getting addicted to that drug and the trail stuff we've shared over the years. And, um, the November project is far from a running club, but you run your ass off at November project. Um, and so, yeah, I guess that's probably an identifying thing. I love to train. I love training. I love bringing people together. I love, um, I, I think I'm, I think I like, maybe I'm a creative, but more importantly, I, one of my identifying factors is that I'm drawn to creative people and environments. And I think that's it. That's who I, I think that's who I am. So you you win the the award for the longest answer of who is X Y Z. That's going to be for all the questions. Just so you right, know. I, we've got about time for one more, John. <laughs> yeah. So so people will often apologize 
for being long-winded uh, while answering questions on a podcast. And my <laughs> response to that is always like, that's the point. Like the goal is not to have the host talk the whole time. The goal is to have the guest spend most of the time talking. Well, so, you, get this, you get this weird, like, get to know you vibe where, like, if you do your job right, won't you escape by talking very little about you? So, like, your listeners might just just not just know you by name and a couple tidbits after getting your insight on all these guests, right? So, like, maybe I try and pull some stuff out of you or learn from you. You're, I mean, you're full tilt into running. Like, you've gotten in so into running. Like, I, dude, I don't know many more, like, big <laughs> Are you like, do you know bigger run nerds than you or are you it? Um, yes, I definitely do. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, uh, yeah, it can, you can go pretty, pretty far off the, the deep end. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, so your whole vibe is community and bringing people together and to, to paint a picture of that back in February, I believe it was February, you set a goal of, and I want to dive in more into November oh. project, but I'm going to start here. You yeah. set a goal of meeting a new person every day for how many days? For a hundred days in a row. For a hundred days in a row. And how many days into that did COVID hit? <laughs> COVID hit. Are you there? Yeah. Uh, the, bro the brother just called. Is there a setting where I can like tell people, oh, in call messages, Turn captions, report a problem, share something. Okay, well, we're just going to let it ride and see who, how many people call. So that was my brother who called. Got um, it. So COVID hit. So that challenge was a 100-day challenge where I wanted to uh, take away two things and add three things. And COVID hit, I think, a week in. So February, I think I started this in early February. Well, you might know the date. Laura and I recorded that on Wisconsin Notes at the Olympic trial. So that was early February, right? That would be late February, yeah. Like the la last week of February. Okay, good. So about a week in, then COVID stuff um, <laughs> began-ish, uh, at least here in the United States. And so, um, yeah, so the two things I was taking out of the, my lifestyle, or to, at least trying to, was alcohol in all forms um, and single-use plastics. And then the things that I were adding was a somersault every day, uh, wearing jorts every day, <laughs> just because, well, whatever. Well, I don't have to explain myself. In, was, in, in uh, a Minnesota winter. In Minnesota winter, which by the way, fun fact, oh, wait, wait, wait. and then meeting a new person. So adding, adding somersault every day, one, at least one, jorts through all activities, and then except sleeping. And then the last one was... Um, being what is it? Being a new person, George Somersault. Got it. So, um, I assumed because I'm probably and I told Laura this, I, I think I'm back in that day, even in the winter in a new city, I was probably meeting five at least five or more people every day, anyway. Just kind of how I roll interactive with people, strangers, right? The male person and the barista, and kind of whoever's in line. I usually, I, I try and subscribe to this thing where once a week I buy a cup of coffee for a stranger, you know, and that's, that's, and all I have to do is just say hi. And I often get their names. That counts. Whatever. I, I remember, I remember seeing this. We were in Flagstaff and you bought a coffee for um, some girl that was standing in line and you, she was, she thought you were hitting on her and you were just right. like, no, no, no. This is like, I, I have a wife and, and I'm just being friendly. Well, I say, I often say with, with people, may, mostly women that might think I'm hitting on them. I say, my wife thinks I'm crazy, but I do this and it happens to be you and you don't have to pay it forward. You just, that's it. I mean, I, so, <laughs> um, okay. But so the, the, one of those five elements of the hundred day challenge, meet a new person. I thought that would be the easy, that would, that's not, that doesn't even really count for me. I just thought, that right. would be, but that was the one that I failed on. Like all the other four, I was able to do not a drink, uh, the summer's all the whole thing. But I just, I, I did about a week of meeting a new person and getting a selfie and kind of putting them up on IG stories and all that. And then I think I did another week or two of like the virtual stuff. I was FaceTiming. I met Mia Frederick's mom, do you know, Mia <laughs> you know, yeah. like, and her dad, but I only counted as one. And like, I don't know. I just kind of lost the vibe. I was telling someone earlier, actually just today, like during that time, 
I even tried like the mask up across the street, like, hey, I'm trying this. I'm trying a hundred day thing with a new person. It's just not, yeah. you need to be in somewhat of a closed environment within reach of someone who's kind of slightly captive in line or something. Right. So yeah, I gave up on that one. Um, meet a new person every day. And then I had this fleeting thought that I'd go back and like, put up a sandwich sign and like knock out like 80 intros just on the street corner and just, just get it done. But I'll have to revisit that one. I'll have to revisit that one. Yeah. So let's, let's back up a little, let's back up a little bit. We're going to, so we, we met through November project, which you started here in Boston in 2011. Uh, I was a part of that first month in 2011. Yeah. So for those who aren't familiar Let's talk accountability. You and Boyan decided this is it. We're gonna we're gonna hold each other accountable for for this. Um, for those who who are listening, where did that idea come from, and and why was accountability so important to you? Yeah, I think um, I I think so, like on a social level in college, everyone's just kind of around campus or around the cafeteria or roommates or easy to get a hold of people. And then throughout your twenties, at least for a lot of folks that I knew in Boston, the further you went into your twenties, in my experience, the harder it was to like meet up with people. Yeah. Are, you, are you in town? Someone's going to a wedding. Like, it's just weird. Like your friends aren't just as, a, as available, especially, especially those that move in uh, with their partner or like kind of give up on the roommates thing or whatever. And so, um, the idea of the lifestyle of just seeing your friends and the accountability of getting in a workout. So boy and Mandrick and I were, um, we were college teammates. We were rowers in Northeastern. And so we were, boy and I met up to have a beer in, in October, 2011. And we were talking about this dynamic and how it's harder to kind of make the plans or even have a, a routine. Or, and then when it came to fitness, he was just curious about how I was staying on track with the majority of my training uh, for uh, marathoning and the BQ thing and trying to, trying to run solo, uh, in the winter in Boston, which as you know, is like, that's, there's not a lot of glamor in that. Everyone looks at Boston in April and they're like, I want to do that next year. And I like, I want to look at them and be like, yeah, let's talk in dark Jan, Feb, March. Yeah. It's not a glamorous thing. It's like, anyway. Um, so anyway, we're talking about that conversation and it was really like a driven idea by Boyan of like, well, let's get it. Let's set. It's almost like it was almost like a bet or a dare or some some kind of like. Could, I'll bet we could. And Boyan, along with the rest of my teammates from college, they'll hold a special place in my life uh, forever. But even catching up with some of them these days, there's still this thing inside of us when I speak to those guys about like, oh yeah, <laughs> okay, are we doing this? You know, like so in any. Yeah. Any way of like, oh, like you want to go camping? Oh, let's fucking go camping. You know, like everything's a little bit intense. And so Boyan's not just a friend in the bar that I'm talking about getting up and running with. He's a former teammate. So right, even in that first conversation, it became like, oh shit, this could be, this could be cool. Um, early morning suck for everyone. I think running sucks for most people and is intimidating to most people, especially starting. And I think the month of November is, well, first of all, I think a month is a long enough time to get into a routine. Even if you're adding just one day a week, one push up a day, if you do it, you know, a month is a good amount of trial right. in the trial period of something. And okay. So one month, then the other important piece was like this weather proof thing of like the, the beginning of November. And we got, we got lucky with this, but for those of you who don't know Boston, the beginning of the month feels like fall and the end is dark and it's pretty much winter. And so what if we can make that transition and see each other and train and get used to alarm clocks, maybe become a little bit more used to running. He was a little less into the running thing at that time. And, um, and that was it. It was supposed to be really simple. It was supposed to be a one month thing. And, um, and yeah, I think the story that isn't told very much is that when, when December came, I was like, well, all right, that was, that was cool. Man. That was awesome. That, thank you. That was good. So done november project is done <laughs> and it was really boyan who was like no man now this is what we do you know that's the story that it's such like a motivational story of like i was into running boy needed motivation like 
that kind of is true. But the most truthful part is like December, I was like, all right, I'm going to sleep in on Monday. He's like, no, no, we, this is what we do. So it was that first winter. We just Monday through Friday, we woke up and worked out before work. And then it was 2012 where we made it into uh, a community kind of offering or gathering using social media and, and really just like trash talking our friends who we knew that were former rowers or idiot roommates of ours still kicking around. And it was like, let's wake up and work out at the Harvard stadium and run up and down these sections. And, um, and like kick the shit out of each other. Like the Harvard stadium, if you haven't been there, like it isn't like running stairs as you know it. Um, and even if you go to the stairs that you know in your city and you skip a stair or do three at a time, like it's just, I can't explain it, it but no matter how fit you are, everyone red lines and everyone is kind of at the edge of their ability. And it's really crazy to share that with people and, and to, um, that that you learn a lot about people and how they handle stuff. So it's so it was a kind of an experiential gathering more than it was like a running club or a boot camp. And so it was this hard to explain thing. Um, and that's the Boston story. The 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 better story, in my opinion, is that from there uh, it grew into this worldwide organization that's now in fifty two cities and hundred and twenty some co leaders that, that that host these workouts that really build that build this thing every week. Um, that are super passionate, connected people in their communities. And so that's November project. I mean, I I think I just, the part I really want to stress um, is that, you know, it's a, it's a vehicle to bring people together, right? Like I think I said that earlier, but it's like people ask so often before they ever get to November project for the first time, like, what are you doing? Like, no, but tell me what the moves will be. You know, you really want to know like how long is, you know, the spin class going to be, or how hot is the yoga room with November project? You can't really get a straight answer out of anybody, right? which provides like some murkiness in it. And over time, I think some allure maybe. So anyway, uh, that's that November project is um, it's making really good leaders, even better leaders over time. Um, It's elevating new athletes and connecting people that wouldn't otherwise know each other. So that's, that's kind of the long and the short of what, um, yeah, I mean, what what else we got? I mean, you 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 started you started going you started going, and when, I think when you were first there, you weren't like nearly into running the way you are now. So I'm not saying NP gets credit, but like I feel like I could be wrong about this. Like I watched you, like like become addicted to marathon running. Yeah, maybe, yeah. So maybe during I, those, at that same time, right? I mean, for sure. I mean, I I got into it. Um, as I was getting into running and I, my story, my story with it is I went to run for Boston, which was the, the run, um, the, that our friend Danny did across, it was across the country, across the country. Right. So it finished, it finished at the, the marathon finish line. So my first like long run was the seven miles or so, or eight miles or so from the Newton um, town hall to the finish line. And, and this was like Sunday night in July of 2013. And I ran seven miles for the first time ever with Laura Ingalls and, um, like that whole crew. And then we went to the Red Sox game that Tuesday night and got pretty drunk at, uh, the game. And then I believe, I believe we're at poor house afterwards. Right. And I had seen Andrew Ference's tweets about November project. So I was like familiar with what it was. Right. And then we were all like, Oh, let's do this thing tomorrow at 1230, 1230 AM on, yeah. on a yes. Wednesday. And so five, five hours later I woke up and that was my first November project. So my first long run was two days prior and then I went to the stadium and I was like immediately hooked. So yes, you're hundred percent right that I was not a runner before I was barely running. And as I got more into it, I got into the, like, I got to do everything, like race, everything, go to every workout. I was doing just the Wednesdays. And then I did the Wednesdays and the Fridays. And then I did the Wednesdays and the Fridays and the Mondays and then the long runs. And then like, I was doing like five workouts a week. And I was 
23. So this was um, acceptable <laughs> for my body at the time. Totally. And, and it just like, it, it spiraled from there. And now like some of the best people I know are from those days. And like, I went to Ryan and Liz's wedding, like they got married, they met a November project. Like it's right, such, right, a, right. it's such a cool, um, I feel that like we did these things together where we're, we're um, we've grown, we've done this, we've done that. So my question wait, 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 wait. is, can I, can I call you in on something? So yeah, the, um, you used a phrase, you said, you said, um, I wasn't a runner. I wasn't into running. I, I barely run, but you had finished a seven miler. And so your perspective is like to be able to say those two things next to each other. Like you're almost right, right away in that runner mentality of, well, two things. Number one, like I'm not a, I'm not a runner, which is like, it's whole, that's like, you can I, write had, a I had run like 15 times total. But in you're the last, like, run seven miles. So, like, right. so you basically skipped over all that beginner stuff because if you're running a seven miler and saying, I'm not a runner, like, can you tell me more about like where that came from? Like, where does that, where does like, was it the people you surrounded yourself with that just like, right away you were in the mix or like, tell me more about that. Yeah. So, so the reason I say I wasn't a runner was because it wasn't something I was doing regularly. And I don't know if that's the right definition, but I, I think that if you run, you're a runner, no matter if you run a five minute mile or a 15 minute mile. Sure. Um, for me, I, I was not running and that's why I wouldn't yeah. have considered myself a runner. I would like, I would run a couple of times to like, I had been visiting my college roommates that were still at UMass and pretty much the only reason I would run was to like run off a hangover oh, and, right. and I would run like five miles around campus and then it would be like two o'clock and then that was like the start of our afternoon. Oh, yeah. um, and that, that was the only reason that I would run. And so I had this like a, a knowledge that I had the ability to run five to seven miles, but I never was like doing it consistently for any like useful reason right 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 i'd love to man i'd love to i would love to see those java splits <laughs> i think i was a run keeper guy back then did, did you work for run keeper no no no. i was like recording on my on yeah, yeah, my yeah. Yeah, on yeah, yeah. my uh, <laughs> phone that was strapped to my <laughs> totally, totally totally the big arm strap i never went that route but i always saw those guys and i was like man that's technology at its finest they had their entire smartphone bobbling <laughs> around on their bicep with full cord <laughs> headphones that's tech, tech. With, the, with the cords wrapped around so it wasn't going everywhere just it's so like, yeah, yeah yeah keep going so so we've talked about the like the foundation of how community has built and fostered like everything about what you brought to this community fast forward nine years we're we're not we're almost like not legally allowed to touch other people or yeah. hug other people or, and I mean that from the pandemic reason, not other reasons. Um, how, how has that first, how has that impacted you? How, how are you dealing with the fact that you can't meet a new person every day or you can't hug the stranger in, in the coffee line next to you? Mm -hmm. um, I didn't realize how much I loved small talk with just like random people and and people hate small talk now because it's like oh you're a threat to me i cannot touch you or right. breathe near you so how how is it going for you that's not good it's not good and also even in even like i've recognized this thing about myself as kind of like a cursed optimist where like even as i tell you that it hasn't been great i'll probably want to sign off with like but you know we're gonna be great and, and we'll get you know like so this is, it's kind of a hard question to answer because it's, it's really uncharacteristic, like, wah, wah. Yeah. I, um, I'm uh, very extroverted. I thrive off of strangers and random interactions. And like, why do you think that is? I, I don't know. I, I haven't really thought too much about it, like too deeply, like the psychology behind it. But like, I think because it feels to me like with a person I don't know, especially with a little bit of an audience, like you and I have hung out like Flagstaff, whatever, around the world. Like we've, we've been at some places, summits, all those things. Like if, if I can get a laugh 
out of someone I'm with and connect with someone I don't know or make their day brighter. Right. It's like, that's a lot of wins. Right. Yeah. And, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe from like a family of loud, funny people, like laughs were like worth their weight in gold. So maybe there's something there, but I really think the biggest explanation for why I like go to people, um, and really seek those interactions is because of, um, it feels like an adventure. It's like there's an adventurous unknown to it. It feels like a you're standing in the, you know, in the 360 degree view of a bunch of doors with question marks. And the fact of the matter is like a good percentage of the time people don't jive and it doesn't <laughs> like, I don't, you know, my records, my, my, my percentages are probably not that great, but like, I just keep going for it. So, so how has that been? You know, it's going to sound really stupid, especially after I laid that all out about who I am. I'm surprised at how much energy I got off of plugging into those interactions because maybe selfishly I thought like I was keeping the barista smiling and that was nice for her as I'm trying to be a cool customer. But yeah. what, I didn't, what I didn't know that was happening in those same interactions was like, I was energetically plugging into something as well. Yeah. So I think that's an important thing. And then, you know, to, to further answer your question, like, I think early COVID was much harder because of the injury and because of we turned off travel and we were trying to figure out what to do with the workouts and, uh, and, um, Oh, that's my brother again. <laughs> not, not taking that. Um, and I was still playing that game of how am I doing? Well, I can't complain. I'm fine with, with everything that's going on. I'm, relatively i have nothing to come up and i think that was a little bit of a um you talk about mental health and people out there that are kind of like finally coming to grips of like it's okay not to be okay you know yeah. I, I i encourage listeners who are not feeling okay the next time someone that you love that you're comfortable with asks you like try not to do that thing of like well it, you know i have it really good so i must be good you know and, and that's the that that's like the the epitome of my year because it's like as you introduced yourself like i am also a straight white male with privilege sure. and in today's climate it feels sometimes uncomfortable to complain and totally and and but that's still valid like the complaints or the struggles that we have it's still valid i for the first month of it, I was still like, yeah, man, it could be worse. But it was like pretty brutal in the moment. I was I was living in a fourth floor walk up mm. apartment in Alston by myself. Dan Adamitz had just moved out. It went from having Dan and Riley in there every single day. So three people, small space to one person, big space all of a sudden. And and other people became threats essentially with this entire unknown you could not interact with other people and i didn't realize how much of an extrovert i was and how much as you said like you you needed that it was it it wasn't just about like making the barista smile or talking to the flight attendant or like making a dumb joke to the to the person checking you out at at the register um I didn't realize how important that was and, yeah, yeah. and like how much I needed that to, to survive. Um, so well, the, energy, the energy around like yeah. the, the energy around a crowded, um, you know, bus depot, bus stop, or the energy around a, um, a presentational space that's packed or a concert or a bar or right. a sporting event or a starting line, you know, uh, you know, pace group or whatever. Like when you are, when you are shoulder to shoulder, elbow to elbow, whether it's November project, whether it's a starting line in Hopkinton, like you don't actually, you and I are talking about interacting. There's another thing that we're not talking about, which is just being by human beings, humans. Yeah. As far as the history of humans that I know, like people go to each other, they don't go away. There's right. a person. And so this idea of like not plugging into that vibe, like, when was the last time you went to a concert and that feel of that murmur and they haven't put the lights down yet and it hasn't begun, but it's that really great, like, yeah. it's like that palpable thing that's hard to explain. It's a mood, right? It's a vibe before the word vibe was just overused. Like, 
And, and that is irreplaceable in a way like that. I think, I think that is a, that's a hard thing to explain. Cause that sounds so extra, right. To be like, I miss concerts. No, but how, it's the, how, it's, how's it going? I miss the football games. Like that sounds like so fucked up. It's the, like that energy, the, like, I remember once you, um, we were talking, I think it was, um, after Flagstaff. And you were telling me, like, next time you're at a start line, look around. You were talking about your relationship with Goldie yeah. and, like, how everything's, like, hype, like competitive in a good way. And you were like, next time, look around. Like, the girl right there, the guy right there, like, that's the that's the buzz. Like, that's the um, – you're racing that person. You're, you know, connected to that person. Like, that's the stuff I miss, too. The, the in the moment, we're doing this. Um, competitiveness that like how are you going to get that with a time trial how are you going to get that with a virtual race how are you going to get that with a zoom workout like yeah i don't know i don't know but and 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 then but then that's in everything take it away from fitness take it away from racing take it away from social uh, uh social gatherings um that's in everything how do you get that out of your employees how do you build teamwork how do you build synergy or corporate shit like i had how- a you know, I had like, a conversation. Yeah, yeah. I had a conversation with my boss this morning, and he had he had just finished a run, and he he messaged me. He's like, "Hey, got a minute?" And this was like before like work hours, right. and I was like, "Sure, what's up?" And so he FaceTimes me as he's like driving back from a trail run in the Fells, and he's like, "Man, I just like had this thing that I needed to talk to you about," and so we talked through it, and um. He, afterwards afterwards he was like he was like this is the stuff i miss like the walking out of the bathroom you know oh hey there's there's jonathan i'm gonna like run an idea by him and and you know that like banter that you cannot plan no matter like i hate planning to begin with but like you can't plan for that kind of interaction you, you it just like it just has to happen there's um the banter that reminded me. There's a picture that resurfaced in my life of the dream team from 1992 of Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, and another guy um, named Larry Bird, and uh, and they're they are cracking up in the locker room, and it's just such a great photo. And I don't and I'll send it to you. And I don't know the joke, and I don't need to, but I remember the pre smartphone days. And I'm not trying to be an old like grandfather about like, I, I remember not having an email address. That's not, that's not the road I'm going down, but as communicators and now multiplied during this time of like zoom fatigue and like social media, just floods and content and just all of it. I wonder, and like your boss, was it your boss that said that? Yeah. Yeah. I wonder, like your boss said, like the further we are away from those water cooler jokes, as lame as they were, or those, the comments in the elevator as fake as those are. And as like, you know, I, we, we, you and I keep referencing the barista. Barista is probably fucking hate us talking. About it. <laughs> the, the point is like, the point is like, as a, as a people, we will get out of practice. And I look at that picture of Jordan, those guys. And I think they were sharp when it came to banter, timing, uh, their real friendships with each other. Do you know what I mean? Like if yeah. I catch you on if I catch you on Instagram ten times in the next month, I'll feel like I'm up to date on your life, right? And we don't have to talk. So y- your point on like being sharp is is so correct. Like I I went to I I saw some friends yesterday, and there were three people, and I can't remember the last time I was in a group of four, and. I was like, how do I interact with these people that like, there's one there and there's one there and there's one there. Like, what, who do I look at? What is, and I'm where, like, where do little, I put my hands? <laughs> yeah. What do I do with my hands? I'm exaggerating a little bit, but, but it was the, the point is like, we're, we can't lose that ability to communicate. So how are you, how are you staying sharp? How are you? So let's fix it. Let's you and I fix it right here and now. I will say <clears throat> you're going to hear a beeping and that's my baby monitor. We're just going to have to deal with that. Um, I will say that um, there are a couple things that I think are really powerful still. And uh, I'm really enthused by 
November project and the starting times, of these workouts and the Zoom stuff, for someone to be on a Zoom screen with someone who's in an apartment that can't leave their apartment and someone who's in a park by themselves who like kind of feels a little bit weird to be up in the morning by themselves, but on their phone, they're seeing dozens of their friends, a hundred of their friends. There's a lot of we're in this together vibe. And I believe in that. I really do. Um, when I was running too much at the beginning of COVID, it was because I was taking some of that accountability vibe we talked about early in this conversation. And I looked at what the member project Minneapolis was doing and all these. And I, I, um, I think the one thing that's a little bit harder is the interaction when everyone's on mute and how did you, unlike November project in person where you get to have these five side conversations like you and your boss, um, you get none or less, it's, it's less possible to randomly have right. in zoom box. And so I was doing the one, what I called it one sixty one, So one slash 60 slash one. And the idea was you and I could do one tomorrow actually, where it's like, we'll get on FaceTime for one minute just to see that we're both laced up and outside, low impact on your data plan. Great. Put our phones away, or you would put yours in your arm strap because you're a bro. <laughs> and, um, and now goes in the in the Lululemon uh, back, uh, yeah, yeah. back the, phone the, case. The that have that like along the side of the leg. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't wait for winter so I can start wearing those again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like very clear that you have like, there's your phone. Right there. It's like, so, um, um, so one sixty one. So I started this with Boyan. He was the first. He and I, you know, it was kind of like the good old days. I said, I need you, man. Saturday morning, I need you. Like I'm not, I'm not getting out of bed. I'm not motivated. Like yeah. And um. And again, if you're listening to this, like I really urge that you try this. And it's, I'll just say it again. I know it sounded simple. One minute of FaceTiming. It's not how did you, what did you drink coffee? How's your day? Fuck all that. It's are you up? Are you ready? And in that time, it's not putting shoes on. It's standing outside ready to go. Click. 60 minutes of movement. Your friend can be walking because they're working on an injury or a jog or a full out 60 minutes of running. And then that most elated, excited, open, spiritual moment of being done and feeling proud and opening FaceTime for one minute before you start your day, two sweaty faces looking at each other and being like, that was awesome. Where, how, how to go? Or if on the competitive vibe, because I'm you're surrounded by intense runners. Like, what were your splits? Like, how what what, what were the, any hills, conditions, all that stuff? Like, it was a really nice way to see people and share just a fraction of that vibe. But that was a huge one. The other one that I do want to mention, because we have summit coming up. I thought that um, one of my favorite moments of feeling connected to not only November Project but beyond in the running world was the Sunrise Six K, which we did with Strava. And you're going to have to bear with me because this is like a very broad and grand way of explaining that experience. But just like, give me a second. The Sunrise 6K, 6K of running or jogging or walking or kind of whatever you want um, was done with Strava. And in any time zone, in any meridian around the world, you had to start or finish your projected time of 6K within 10 minutes of sunrise. So it's kind of like an epic time for whoever is seeing the sun rise in their zone. Um, we had 17,000 registration. We were pretty excited with two or 3,000. So 17,000 registration was awesome. Um, and then there was some kind, and this is the stretch. This is where I get a little cosmic. There was some kind of a feel of togetherness. And I'm probably too close to it. And I'm probably too much of a believer in community. But there was a feeling of tomorrow's the sunrise 6K. I'm going. The same way we feel on Tuesday nights in Boston. I'm going tomorrow. Got my outfit, I'm fucking set, here we go. And it felt like a race and a workout all in one. It didn't, there's no pressure to do it really well. If you could, if you wanted to, shout out to Grady Jackson who did it like he was on fire. Um, but the, the vibe I felt, and I got goosebumps then, was I'm running with my people, with my friends. And then ironically, I actually did see a couple members of November Project Minneapolis on the same trail, you know, passing. <laughs> You know, we gave ourselves, you know, Minneapolis, we follow the rules so well. It's like not six feet. It's like 60 feet of distance <laughs> far away. But um, it felt like I was up in the morning with my friends. So, for, and the, the reason I'm giving those couple of examples and Strava was pumped on it. We were, Brooks was pumped on it. And I think it went really well for November Project's first virtual thing. 
Um, and those of you that don't really feel the whole virtual race thing, don't give up on it. Try it again. Don't just decide that it sucks because they sent you a, a medal in the mail and there was no beer tent. Like keep, keep at it. It's something. Um, but more importantly, for those people out there, I'm speaking to November Project co-leaders, I'm speaking to run club leaders, I'm speaking to trainers and yoga teachers and spin instructors, keep messing with the digital creativity. Keep synthesizing something new. Like, I'm sorry to be on this rant because I'm definitely not answering your question, but like, that's, I think, the responsibility for leaders in fitness is like, okay, so it seems like it's just Zoom, Right. Well, the 161 thing is not brilliant, but it gets people out of bed. So try it and try it five times before you decide that you love it or hate it. You know? Yeah. I just think, I think that's such a key thing right now. Not to just be like, oh, running's canceled. The races are off. Boston's off. Probably next year too. It's like, <laughs> fuck man, like, come on. So that would be one kind of shot to the, to the, to the running world, whether you're an elite or a newbie, like let's keep trying stuff. Let's keep trying stuff. And if you see someone that's trying stuff, don't hate and see how it goes. Just jump in. I, I, I can't stress that enough. We need more people trying stuff and we need more people that want to believe, you know, like well, this digital thing I think is going to get better. Yeah, totally. Thanks again to John G for sponsoring the podcast. I've enjoyed seeing John G grow over the years and their gear has only gotten better as time has gone on. I have a few pairs of both the AFO split and AFO middle shorts and highly recommend them. Their singlets are super cool too. You can take 15% off all month with the code FTLR15. I hope you love them as much as I do. And now back to our conversation. So um, MP Summit was supposed to be this past this past weekend, right? And now it's next weekend. I think I have that right. No, it's, uh, the, it's the last weekend of October. So that Sunday was, will be November 1st. So it's the very... It's the very last weekend of October. You're right that it was supposed to be last weekend here in the Twin Cities, around the Twin City Marathon, um, which for me was like a really selfish play. When that idea came up like a year ago, I like froze on the phone call with Brooks and the November Project uh, HQ team. I think Brooks said it first. They're like, well, how do you feel about Minneapolis? I was in Minneapolis. <laughs> so I was like, I don't know, guys. Anyone want to chime in? Because I was pumped, you know? Um, <laughs> November Project Minneapolis has been around since 2014. It's one of the most consistent groups when it comes to numbers. It's like still 40, 50, 60, 70 people in the dead of winter, and it gets very cold here. And then uh, well over 100, 150, 170 people in the summer. And so seasonally, it's like it's a strong community for MP here. Um, and they've had some really talented, like very passionate, powerful leaders and some really memorable members over the years. Um, so it was coming home. It was going to come to where I live and get to pretend to be from. And, um, you know, November Project followed the cancellation of the NBA. Laura Green got us on the phone after she took a trip to Philadelphia to visit November Project Philly. And she was like the only person on her flight and was like, guys, this is a real thing. So when, when races began canceling, you know, the Boston's and the, the whatever, everything in the spring, we really just crossing our fingers that it wasn't going to be as far away as October 4th. Well, here we are. And obviously it's been canceled for a while. Um, the virtual event is going to be really cool. It's going to be really, really different for us to have some, you know, content that's happening live, some things that like they're not movable on your calendar. Like you have to participate boy and I leading a workout on Friday morning and, um, collaborative content projects. We're working with these two filmmakers at Deuster, like we do all the time, but also a really talented poet out of Brooklyn to do a collaborative piece about what it means to show up in 2020. Um, our tagline in November project is just show up and redefining that. Like, what does that mean to you? And so there's a content project going on where people are sending their stuff from all over. So that's happening. We're doing stuff with Des. We're doing this week long Strava challenge called the summit streak. That's going to be fucking awesome. Um, and as well as uh, some leadership training that we're offering for all of the members of, of November Project around the concept of identity. Identity is a really great place to start. And we both brought it up in our own introductions, but um, around the conversation of anti-racism and beginning to understand privilege uh, in, an, in an attempt to educate people on who they are and not scare people away in the conversation about race here in the United States. 
identity has been a really great place, at least for November Project and our leaders to start. It's an education that we started a year and a half ago. Um, and we're going to be offering that for everybody. So I don't want to give it all away, but follow November Project for some of the promotion on that stuff. It's going to be, uh, you know, like everything else these days, it's going to be fucking weird and like kind of <laughs> cool and like really athletic and like kind of solo, you know? <laughs> yeah. November cool. Project Summit 2020. It'll be kind of weird. Kind of weird, but kind of solo and kind of cool. Yeah, Super kind cool. of good, kind of bad. Yeah. Just show up. Um, <laughs> okay, cool. I've got a couple of like themes that I like to hit with with most guests and yeah and I'm I'm super curious on your take on some of these so let's start with um balance what is what does balance mean to you um what does balance mean to me I think that balance can be something that is achieved it's first of all it's hard I think anyone that's trying to go all in on things in life and do a lot of different things is going to have a challenge with that. Um, I think it's about figuring out your priorities and then figuring out how to make those puzzle pieces work on a daily. But also, I'm really inspired. Um, um, there's a, 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 a one of the athletes. Um, it's like the big alpinist world. Her name is Hillary O'Neill. She changed her last name. She's Hillary something. Um, she talked about balance and I'm really, I'm really drawn to her answer, which is like, there's the daily and the weekly and the monthly balance, which can kind of be out of whack. Like if you're getting ready for Boston or if you're, you know, if you're getting ready for a big presentation or you're traveling for work, or if, you know, your kid has a spelling bee coming up, like you may put time and energy and life, uh, into things and throw off your balance over a small amount of time, man, this week's been crazy, man. I was at the office all day night man i haven't slept man that long run freaking knocked me out this weekend so balance over the course of days or weeks can seem out of whack the way she talks about balance is about you know kind of going back and feeding those empty spaces over the course of a year because her life is about being in nepal for two months acclimating and then doing the climb over another month and then you know what i mean (laughs) so like how can she be a good mom during that summer right Okay, but what can you do in the fall? What can you work? Where? What holidays do you make sure you're a part of? And so, I think balance is something that's like it's a long play too. Like, what if what if you could just be like a really fucking good dad for one year, and then like a pretty shitty dad for the rest of the time? Or you could spread that out over. You know what I mean? Like, like, yeah. or, or, or let's go with running. Like, especially for new runners like you, by the way, that went like crazy all in. Right. Balance might be about pacing pacing even the interests that are healthy for you you know a friend likes to a friend likes to describe it as like a season so your your seasons are this way and she's a new mom as well so she comes to it from that perspective like i need to focus on the baby for the next x period of time and then i can focus on training for x and then oh i haven't you know spent time with my husband like we used to like stuff like that's been her experience with it so it's like the ebb and flow of as you said like where you're putting your focus and and where like not patching holes but like you can only you have you have 100 energy points and they go 90 here and 10 here and sometimes it just like shifts and you got to put it over here and then put it over there well, the, old, the older you get to, there's like energy stores and these reserves, almost like you were just talking about where it's like, all right, well, if you wake up and you bust your ass in this like garage gym workout thing, then you might not be super enthusiastic about giving your wife a foot rub at 9 p.m. Just an example. <laughs> just a random example. Hey, one thing I did want to bring up and I'm sitting here thinking like, should I share that? It's very personal. I'm going to, I haven't said this out loud yet. And so it feels a little bit kind of new. Um, but one of the things I think is helpful for folks that are like feeling depressed or might be depressed or like kind of like are new to that vibe, especially during COVID times. And, and I have, I am no expert in depression and I don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about. So this is not like medical, this is nothing, but just guidance towards like kind of figuring out what, where, like what, how to keep kind of the day to day going for me. And it, it falls into conversation of balance. Um, it's almost like a pros and cons list. Like, and, and I urge folks if, if they're interested in trying this, it's something that's, working ish for me 
Um, but it's never done. And so this idea of listing out things that make you happy, you know, like gratitude uh, maybe, in, a, in a way. Yeah. Or even just like maybe, yeah. Okay. Let's go with gratitude. But even like, what are like, it could be a fucking granola bar, you know, like what yes. are the, what are the things in your day, the exact thing, spaces and smells and whatever, what are the things that make you happy? And then another list of the things that you know are not good for you. Like, so look at that though. It's not, it's not the scales aren't equal there. It's not like, and then let's list the things that make us sad. Yeah. I'm saying we all know things that we do that we know aren't good for us. So maybe complaining or maybe sleeping in or maybe getting up too early or maybe being critical about your mileage or maybe dietary shit. Like, you know, the things that you do that aren't good for you. And then if you start paying attention to some of the things that you know make you happy, I know it's not this simple for everybody, but at least for me where I'm at right now, it's like, okay, so then ride your bike. You should ride your bike every day, you know? And I know that's simple, but right now it's just such a swirl of like feelings and disconnection that I think sometimes when you go as simple as just a li- just two lists, it can give you a lot of directions for like, man, it was a shitty day. Well, I, I noticed that I didn't do anything on that one list. Not a single thing. How should I close my day with something that makes me feel shitty or with one of the things that I missed off that list of things that make me feel good. Can you talk about the tattoo that's on your thigh? <laughs> oh, with the box? Yeah, one of my favorite people of all time. His name is Jay Crookshank. He's also a creative that works at a company called 1650 in La Jolla, California. Jay and I got matching tattoos on the day of the Santa Run. The Santa Run is like a five, three miler, 5K, something in San Diego. And it's a box, a perfectly square box, like a check box. And next to it, it says the word fun. And <laughs> it's like an interactive tattoo. <laughs> it's an interactive tattoo that like is just below the line of like my cycling kit. Or if you're wearing running shorts, like it's just below that line. So it's somewhere between like, it's like the bottom of your quad, like a little bit higher than your knee. So I look down and it reads fun to me. It reads upside down basically to my eyes. And so if I'm having a fun day, in fact, I'll fucking check it right now. Um, <laughs> but the idea is, in fact, I'm getting a marker. Hang on. <laughs> it has been a fun day. Um, but anyway, so Jay and I got these matching tattoos. Um, yes. We got these matching tattoos as uh, just a reminder. He's such a fun guy. He's also a creative guy. And, um, it's a metric that I think people forget about, you know, it's been, it's been chasing me around most of my life of like, is this fun? No. Then what the fuck are we doing? And maybe that's not always healthy, but for me, it's, it's gotten me into a couple, couple of good places in life. I think that, I think it is healthy. I think that like one of the early realizations from the pandemic for a lot of people is that their jobs were not satisfying and they were spending like way too much time doing something that didn't bring them any, validation or enjoyment or fulfillment and i've had conversations with a bunch of my friends that like fall in this category and they were like man i'm just like putting all of my time to the man and giving all of this time to something that i can always do more of and the feedback loop is not there and people were just like that's so fucked up yeah. Yes, you need a job. Yes, you need pay. Yes, you need health insurance, blah, 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 blah. But that's a decision that you chose to be at this place. Again, place of privilege. You not not everybody can choose where they work and whatnot. But I think the the point is reflecting on like where you're focusing those hundred points of your day or or the the mental effort of I'm going to choose to do something that's fun or I'm going to choose to do something that's X, Y, Z. Um, I think in today's day and age, it's more important than ever before. Yeah. I mean, I, first of all, I, I obviously agree with you because of what I do for a living. So yes, 500% for sure. It's also a little, it's a, that's a tough one to hear right now when so many people are unemployed. That's a whole right. And then my grandfather was, um, rest in peace his his whole thing he said we're the first generation of people that think that we deserve to be passionate about our careers we're the first generation of people who feel 
that we deserve to be passionate about our careers. So he's from that era of like, he worked for the cement company for 55 years, you know, right. so that's, that's, that was success back then. So it's an interest. We're a part of an interesting generation of like, no, I want to know how my company is giving back. And like, that's super legit, but unemployment kind of simplifies the conversation of like, wait, pay, pay, I guess you pay your bills. Right. Right? So, so anyway, I think, I think that's it. Can I, can we go back though one quick second and then we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll move forward. Do you mind sharing as a, cause we, you and I talked before this call about how we could kind of catch up during the interview or yeah, yeah. The podcast. Can you share two things that you do? Like, so start with the negative one and then we'll get to the positive one. What is something that you do these days during the pandemic that you know, isn't good for you, but you do it anyway. And then what is one thing that, you know, makes you feel good? So I spend an ungodly amount of time on my phone and it's horrible and I know it's horrible and I can't stop because what else am I going to do? I've like gone, I've, I've picked up more things to do or like things to add to my plate simply to use as a distraction. Like now I have, now I have a newsletter. I'm putting out two podcasts a week and it's like, the the time that I'm filling, it used to be commuting or right. going out to dinner with friends or like seeing friends or whatever, right. stuff like that. So I'm just like filling space. And like you said, like I'm I'm running a lot. Early in the pandemic, I was doing like 15 to 17 hour training weeks because I was like, what the hell else am I gonna do? Um, and that's not sustainable going from basically like half that volume um to that so so that that's my answer give me, give me a positive one so the positive one is um i mean running it's been like the biggest consistency in my in my year um i'm gonna give two answers that's the easy one the the not easy one is human connection um i'm like facetiming people out of the blue again using my phone but um, I'll just, I'll just dial someone up and be like, Oh, caught you at home. Great. Let's talk. Yeah, totally, um, totally. And I've gotten closer with people that, um, I've been friends with. Um, but I just like, I called a friend a couple of weeks ago and she was like, we pretty much only talk when you're here in California. And, right. and I was like, we've had cell phones for 10 years or 20 years. And like, we could have fixed this. So it's, it's like being more real with people and just like having more of this real talk or deep, deep conversations, big talk um, that used to just be like texting, Hey, how are you? Blah, blah, blah. Or just like not non-existent whatsoever. So I, that's been like fairly consistent throughout 2020. Um, so I'd say that's like the good, that's a, the, that's the good, the good one. I, I always remind my friends and family as often as I can that m- all of the smartphones that are sold these days still have the telephone call feature. It's part of it. Like that's still built in. So I had this conversation with, with our mutual friend, uh, Steph, um, Steph, the North face runner. And she called me and left a voicemail and was like, Hey, I feel weird calling without like, texting you first to check in that like it's a good time to call and so i called her back and i was like i forget what i was doing i must have been busy i guess i think i was in a meeting or something and i was like isn't it bizarre that we we need to check in to make sure it's okay to like have a phone call in 2020 like that's the purpose of the phone like you pick it up you call someone and that's and that goes back to jordan and those guys in the locker room it's like oh is my kid Who's two and a half now based on this texting culture, by the way, I sound like an old man right now and I'm fine with it. <laughs> is he going to be a shittier communicator when it comes to picking up the phone and calling, you know, um, interviewing, asking someone out on a date, X, Y, Z, having hard conversations, having celebratory conversations. Like, is that a, is that a dying industry skill uh, human connect to, to feel weird about picking up the phone? Do you remember, wait, how old are you? 30. 30. So you probably do. Remember when the landline would ring and it would be yeah. like, fuck yeah. It was 
It was yeah. so exciting. Someone's I still remember the phone numbers of of my like Bill. best friend growing up, Me but too. I don't I I've never memorized a girlfriend's phone number. I've never memorized like I don't have anybody's phone number memorized now, but I can remember I'm not going to say it now because <laughs> I don't want somebody to dial it, but like I can Damn. tell you Damn. like Zach's phone number. What's Zach's phone number? Say <laughs> it. Gonna... <laughs> say it. Just say 781 it. 444 7227. Like, this was my my yeah. high school, my my elementary school best friend. And yeah. I like biked by his house the other day. And I was like, damn, good times from like uh, 1996 through 99 or whatever it was. There was, a, there was a very important person in my life who I dated in middle school. And um, she and I both got into rowing and became friends throughout all of our years. And she was an incredible college athlete. Um, but I remember calling her house and her dad would pick up and I would have to say, uh, hi, is, is Claire there? And just, and the reason I'm telling you this is that I want to give you, I want to just give a shout out. If anyone wants to call Claire, I'm sure her land, parents have the landline. It's 608-233-9491. So ring Claire. Claire. She doesn't live there anymore because she's she's well into her 30s. And she's left the, left to the nest. Um, well, I think like a couple more closing closing thoughts because like you're trying to like make this into a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you talked about success and you alluded to success and and this is one so your question was how many podcasts have i put out i put out over 100 episodes 75 percent of them are with professional athletes or or people who have gone to the olympics or meddled in the olympics or whatever so asking what does success mean to you is a fascinating practice with these types of people as well as anybody who has achieved anything in their professional um in their professional career and i find some very consistent trends among this answer um i'll share them but first i want to know what does success mean to you um I'll, and i'll answer that <laughs> that's how this dialogue works that's how this goes this is a podcast Hey, have you ever looked at the percentage of um, of guests that are uh, people of color on your show? Before? I have, and I'm embarrassed. That's okay. It. Do you know what it is? Is it like is it less than ten percent? Is it five percent? One percent? It's it's about ten percent. Okay, I just I think it's important this year that we like kind of look in the look in the mirror with that stuff. Rich yes. Rich Roll, Rich Roll um, podcast earlier this year, he was doing an interview with Knox Robinson, who's a, a writer in the run space. Um, and really interesting conversation, but they, they spoke of that representation and how Rich Rich ran right to his percentages as like his defense. And not that his numbers were great, but I just, I think it's an important thing. Um, okay. What does success look like? Well, look, man, you and I have been friends for a lot of years. And so you know that that's changed for me with November Project. So I'm going to give, like I almost always do, a November Project answer and a Broken Graham answer. Um, success for November Project. In 2020 is to uh, change with the times, uh, to not get discouraged, to remain hopeful and open to criticism and and uh, creative and uh, success for no so like evolve and adapt. Yeah, and, and success for November Project is going to be about keeping people connected and changing uh, it with the platforms and the times and the opportunities that come um, and being honest and being open. I know that's pretty general success for me has to do with um, feeling challenged and feeling uh, uh, adventurous and thrilled. You know, I've been very spoiled throughout my life. And I don't think that my knack or need or connection to adventure and, and travel and you and I talked about thriving off of interactions and these, yeah. un, these unknown question mark doors. I think that's who I am. I think that's kind of my yeah. true form. And so it's figuring that out. I'm, I feel like I'm like wrapping up your show for you. It's figuring out how to, how to stay um, true to that passion of who I am 
while balancing, so he brought in balance, while, while balancing the family life. Look, man, if I go off and, and, and do the travel thing and do my job well and I come home to a pissed wife, then that can't be success. Right. And if I'm hanging out with my kid and I'm missing, you know, a phone call from Stephen Blyce, that can't be success. And so maybe success is balance. And, and, and in that balance, I think, and this is a, a key one for, um, for the COVID era, is, is if I don't feel good. Right. Yeah. So if Boyne and I were crushing Slack and the email game and all the phone FaceTime, all the Zoom, Zoom, this, that, the Microsoft meetings, all that shit all day long and in the after hours and somehow my wife is happy and my kid feels seen and isn't seeing his dad on his phone and there's groceries in the refrigerator. But I feel like shit. That can't be success either. Yeah. So I urge people to maybe steal a little bit off my notes there and just, and and off my test, shoot off my tests and and know that like, that's, I think that's the balance piece, you know? Yeah. I love it. Um, Last question. And I'm surprised you haven't asked more questions. The last time we did this or uh, last time I was last, last time we tried this, I was like, fuck this podcast. I'm going to make it. I was like, like, 20, it was like 20 questions. And then it kind of backfired because, like, you weren't as flustered. Like, you kind of held your own. I was like, damn, I didn't. He's a professional. Anyway, <laughs> last question. Uh, what do you wish people knew about you? What do I wish people knew about me? Um, wow, that's a really good question. Um, what do I wish people knew about me? I wish people knew that I do give a fuck. I think my carefree kind of like boisterous personality and history of who I am is fun and it's colorful and it's like bold and it's like in the middle of the room or making noise on the side or starting to riot outside. But I think often we write people off based on what we think. Our mutual friend, Kelly Roberts, when we really hung out for the first time, we'd been at a bunch of stuff together, but. She said, wow, you really, you, you really misrepresent yourself. Like, I thought you were an asshole. <laughs> so what do I wish? The beer mile? I think that was it, actually. <laughs> In San Diego, she, at Corinne Jay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, look, we don't have time to talk about that, but that was epic. No, but she was very, very honest with, like, I read the book by its cover, and this tall, tattooed, loud, confident yeah. guy probably seemed more broski and kind of full of himself. And, uh... And maybe there is some of that, but um, so that pursuing that, and I don't have time to make, to win everybody over in life, but I wish people knew that I am, I'm engineered by some good Midwestern folks to be thoughtful, you know, and, 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 and I know that to be true when I look at my kid and prioritize things that I didn't know I was programmed with necessarily, or the things that I thought were annoying, please. And thank you for everything. Yeah. You know, so, so th- those kinds of things, um, I don't think I'll get to know everyone that I'm connected to in this modern era, but that is the one thing that most everyone that knows me a little doesn't know. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, I feel like you, your presence is like on so often right, that right, right, right. when you're, when you're so rarely off and when you're off, the off is like an incredible person um when when I, like i first experienced this when we were in flagstaff before right. um rob car camp and by the way i'm i'm still sore from that um <laughs> from that race um <laughs> when when we were in the car and yeah. you were like tell me about your life right and and like we had real conversations you that fresh like off the plane dude. you picked me up at the airport right yeah 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 yeah, and I remember that. You were you were off. You were not like I'm BG. I'm gonna like make everybody laugh. Sure. I don't know sure. if you didn't have your coffee yet or whatever, but um, <laughs> we went straight to a we went straight to a, a a coffee shop. So perhaps that was it. But yeah, I was really just um, caffeinated. Yeah. But 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 the point is like that's a side that people don't often see, and so I get where you're coming from on that. And there's like a human who cares so much mm. um, behind that you know, light toggle, light switch toggle, uh, which was really cool to see. 
I appreciate you saying that. And of course, it's cool that you know that. I, I think my friends know that. And so some people that are acquaintances like get to know that over time. I do think that it's tough. The job is tough because the November Project co-leaders, I think, in its original blueprint, we're all just friends. Right. And that was part of the role. We were all just friends. Right. So I think that's been a struggle as it's grown to what it is. I still think that's possible <laughs> to be friends with all these folks. Yeah. <laughs> it isn't enough time, you know? Right. So it really hurts my feelings if I don't have time to get on a call with somebody who like it probably that probably doesn't bum them out too much. But anyway, um, yeah, that's the thing. It's so funny, man. I'll be thinking about this conversation for quite some time after. Um, and I don't know how many listeners do you get? Fifteen, fifteen hundred, fifteen thousand? Uh, about ten million. Um, yeah, okay, cool. No, it's it's about thirty two hundred an episode these days. Oh, so shit. it's it's a healthy uh, healthy audience. That's pretty legit. Well, then can I plug the Strava thing again? Go for it. Yeah, so that the the days leading up to the, that very last week of October, Monday through Sunday, it'll be what's called the Summit Streak, which is a challenge on Strava that we're pumping out to North America and the world. Um, and it's just a way for runners and new runners and non-runners to get out and move. Part of the little drop-down menu on Strava, I want you, you elite-type runners or you run nerds, to notice how many other things there are to do and maybe paddle one day or maybe roller skate one day and maybe only do running once. So anyway, um, as well as all the content and the things that roll out that weekend, but the Strava thing with Brooks, I think is going to be really special. Sunrise 6k was a total hit. And so even if you just know of this challenge for you and for the, the listeners, like that's another opportunity for, as as far reaching as it is, it's some togetherness and and a really fun week of movement. I just know that when I nail at least 30 minutes or more every day, I feel better. I have a better day. So anyway, that's my plug. I can't believe we actually did this. <laughs> <laughs> what? Right? <laughs> I swear I think gonna, it went well. We're gonna get off and you're gonna be like, <laughs> oh, so it didn't it didn't record. I checked like 10 times to make sure it's it, yeah, I see the little red button up here. Yeah. Um, so I think I think it worked. I've I've used yeah. Google Meets before, so I think I'm going to be able to get the audio. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll see. But where can people follow you if they want to follow along with uh, with your jokes and yeah, all the good so the stuff main, that you've got? The main the main uh, source of life that I believe in is is the Instagram handle uh, November Project. Just straight through. Um, I'm Broken Graham. The garage gym that I'm in love with is called uh, Karim Gym North. My wife is Goldie Yoga, and um, and uh, yeah. If you're curious about the Rob Carr Ultra Camp that, that Levitt and I fell in love at, and fell in love with each other, that place is. In, in fact, we'll have to come out and do another episode at some point with you, me, and Rob or something because that was epic, epic. Um, and thank you, thank you. I can't, I can't say it enough. This has been really cool, and um, and as much as I make fun of you, runners, podcasts, <laughs> tech. All of this. This has been a treat. So thank you. Likewise. Appreciate it. Boom. That was awesome. That was pretty good. Uh, that was pretty good. Let me see if I can. Cool. Stop recording this meeting. Google Drive. Good. Everyone in the guest list will be given. That's it for today's episode. Like many long runs, it's sad when it has to end. I hope you join in next week on For the Long Run. And in the meantime, happy trails. If you've enjoyed this episode, it would mean a lot to me if you shared it so that others can find it and enjoy it too.